Hey everybody, welcome to the round 11 player ratings. I guess this is just part of the healing process. You know, week to week, we talk about the games, we talk about the player ratings, and then it's the only way we can truly move on from it. Still fucking hurts, man. It still hurts, but we must move on. It happens. Um, and we need to be able to get on with it. So if you're new to the play ratings, welcome. They are sponsored by Doing A Bit. You'll see I've got the fresh merchandise on, which I'm very grateful for. My man, Mark Sanders, and the company he runs called Doing A Bit. It's an activewear company, lifestyle brand. It's all about getting out there and doing something for yourself. That's the message behind the brand. Um, basically, what I like to do in these videos is just give the players a rating between one and 10, five being a pass mark, and above, and essentially it's just a discussion point. We will tally these votes at the end of the year and, and use them to crown the Blue Abroad Player of the Year. And so I'd like to start the discussion here. You guys can finish it in the comments and correct me on any of the scores that you think are too high or too low, and then we can go from there. So basically, I'm just gonna read it out as the team was named, and we'll go from there. So we start with Weedering, Lewis Young, and Liam Stocker. Weedering, I'm not going to give him a rating for obvious reasons, but it's really devastating. <laughs> it's really devastating what happened. Uh, I thought he started the game so strongly, and he's hurt his shoulder. At the time of filming this, I'm not exactly sure what the official diagnosis is, but it looks like we're going to be without him for... Anywhere between three to eight weeks. So we'll just cross our fingers and hope that, you know, we get him back in the side sooner rather than later. But, you know, obviously he's not someone we can afford to lose, but we have. So I'll let him go. I won't I won't rate him. Lewis Young. Um don't think he had anywhere near the impact that he's had over the last few weeks. He didn't take a mark, and that's probably been one of the, the strong suits of his game over the last few weeks. I mean, there's going to be bumps in the road. I'm sure that his role was shaken up after Weedering went down and we're really going to need to rely on him. That's the truth. He's going to need to really step up. I think he already has stepped up and we're going to ask for more from him over the course of the next couple of months. So I'm excited by that prospect for him because it's going to force growth. Um, in this game, I just didn't feel... Like I saw him much, didn't feel like I noticed him impacting the game as much. So uh, for that reason, I gave him a four for his game. Um, granted, I haven't watched the replay. That's the truth. And I just can't bring myself to stomach it if I'm totally honest. So bear with me on that. I'm going to give Lewis Young a, um, a four for that game. Stocker, I think early on, the, the kicking was just not of the ilk that I've come to expect from Liam Stocker, a few direct turnovers, but he seemed to get better from, from there after the first two kicks. Um, you know, he's tough in defense. There's something about Stocks and the way he plays. You just you just trust him when you're going to battle. You know, he's, he's a real competitor. Um, I thought he was okay. I thought he defended well. You know, he's there in the side right now to be a defender. I'm not so much looking at his offensive stats as much as his defensive work. And I think... He's putting in a good shift and he's another one that's going to need to step up. And like I said last week, just need to get continuity with him and, and hopefully he can just play the rest of the season, you know, injury free. You know, that's, that's what we, that's what we pray for. So stocks, I gave him, I gave him a six for his game. Next up, we've got Plowman, Saad and Doherty. Plowman, I think he's just had three really solid weeks. Um, I think he, he was, he, he played for the most part on Brody Majacek and did a really good job. And you've got to give him kudos. You know, he was, Brody Majacek's a guy that gives us issues every time we play Collingwood. And I thought uh, Plowman, for the most part, from what I saw, um, you know, manned him up. I know that we have a bit of a, a, you know, a rotating defensive scheme and, you know, certain players will take uh, certain players off others and, and, you know, there'll be a bit of a, you know, a rolling defensive mechanism. But the way I saw him defend was fine. Uh, I'm not expecting Plowman to win a lot of the ball. Granted, he still had 14 possessions, went at 85%. So I, th I thought he actually played really well. So um, I gave him a seven for his game. Saad, I think Saad was one of our best players on the day. I probably gave it, 
would probably say it's between him and Walsh. Some of his efforts... Now, I was sitting up on level four, so I saw the game from a totally different lens. And Saad has this unbelievable ability to make it where he's uh, taking a risk um, to come off his man and impact the contest. And there were quite a few occasions where he did that. I thought he was just immense. And, you know, I'm not going to give anybody a 10 in this game, but uh, I really, really did think Saad was one of, if not our best players on the day. So uh, I'm going to give Saad a nine. I really thought he stood up in just critical moments, defended well, ran really hard and really put really put some effort in. So I gave him a nine. I, th- I thought he was exceptional. Doc, I thought he was also solid. He's becoming a real, I mean, he's always been a warrior, but he's becoming a real Trojan. Now he just, he gets his body in positions. He gets hit. Um, he gets back up. He cops some serious, um, some serious treatment over the last few weeks. There've been some really hard knocks. I think the buy is coming at a good time for a guy like Sam Doherty because I imagine a lot of them are sore, but I imagine Doc over the last few games is really sore. 31 possessions at 77%, um, 605 meters gained. I think he was, again, one of our better players on the day. So I gave him uh, an eight for his game. We moved to the midfield, O'Brien, Cripps, and Fisher. Lockie O had the 21 possessions, went at 76%. I was a bit surprised to see his possession tally. I didn't realize he won that much of the ball. I didn't sense while I was at the game that he impacted significantly, but he got his job done and then some. 21 possessions, um, 221 meters gained, which I would like that to be a little bit higher. I think when when Lockie's playing at his best, he's hovering around that 350 to 400 mark. Um, you know, he, he definitely, one thing about this game for him, if it wasn't his best game, you know, it's, I talk about that minimum standard, and I think if that's not one of his more influential games, but he's winning the ball 21 times, I think there's some progress there. So I'm going to give him a six for his game. Then we move to Cripps. Cripps had 25 possessions and a goal. Didn't quite have the impact on the game that I was thinking he might have. And that's probably just due to my own, maybe the unfair expectations, but he was good. I mean, he was he was good without being his absolute best. Playing in this ruck role, like I said over the last few weeks, I just imagine it just takes away a little bit from what he does best. And, you know, that 5 or 6% or 7% of the game where he's taken the ruck duties around the ground takes away from his full focus on him being the best, you know, inside midfielder than he can be. That, that's how I feel about it anyway. So um, did his job, kicked an important goal in the second quarter to get us going. What would I give him out of 10? Probably give him, I probably give him a seven or an eight. I think seven's a little too harsh, but I think eight's a little too high. I don't know. I'm going to put it as an eight and let you talk about it in the comments. Then it's Zach Fisher. Zach Fisher had the 17 touches. He kicked the two behinds. He's been in scintillating form over the last few weeks. Obviously didn't have the same impact in this game as what he's had over the last couple of weeks. Well, let's just call it the last month. Um, but still won enough for the ball, had his shots on goal, just didn't convert. And, you know, it's the difference between him getting probably a, an eight and, uh, and a six. I gave him so hard this week. Gave him a six, but I feel like that's a little, a little harsh. I don't know. We only lost by four points, but nonetheless, my gut feeling says six. We move on. Cottrell, Walsh, Durden. Cottrell, the possess- I, I looked at the stats after the game and, you know, the story will say 15 possessions at 53% disposal efficiency. And I was a bit surprised by that. I noticed in certain critical moments, his work rate and his ability to just, the game really is starting to slow down for him. It's noticeable. And the improvement is really starting to shine through. I'm a lot more confident in Matthew Cottrell than what I was 12 months ago. I completely changed my tune on where I think he can get to. Because at the end of the day, He's got the work rate. He runs super hard and super, he's just super durable and he just keeps going. And I think eventually you get the reward for that. And once the the skill level and, and all of the decision-making and all of the, you know, getting used to the speed of the game, once that matches and uh, levels up with the work rate, he's going to be a really good player. I'm pretty confident as to where he's going. Now in this game, I gave him a six. 
thought he was uh, thought he was okay, did his job. But the thing with the wingers, don't want to give them too much credit because I've still got images of still side bottom, just free. Just on the fat side, just finding a way to get free. Now, I don't know whose fault it was. It's everyone's fault. You know, everyone takes blame. But those those wingers at times, just throughout the game, just uh, there was just too many occasions where I noticed still side bottom get free. So Cottrell for six. Sam Walsh, I thought he was really good. He's really, really back to his best. Um, probably didn't use the ball very well early. However, 35 possessions, mate. He's, he's going as hard as he can. He's putting in a shift and he's really having a dip at it. Um, kicked a goal as well. One of our best players with Saad. So I gave him a I gave him a nine for the game. Thought he was he just he just kept going all day and he just loves it. The hotter it gets, the more he thrives under it. So I gave him a nine. Corey Durden, I liked his game. Uh, kicked a beautiful goal early in the piece. Got us going. Had the seven touches. Kicked a goal. Laid the two tackles. Laid the pressure. I think the the smalls got a bit of a uh, probably as a collective. They weren't at their absolute best and they just seemed like they weren't at the fall of the ball for a lot of the game in the critical moments. So for that reason, I'll give Durds a six as well. Jesse Motlop, he had some nice moments. There was a passage of play that sticks out for me. I think it was late in the first, just the double, triple, quadruple efforts. And, you know, that's going to be a feature of his game, hopefully moving forward. The fitter he gets, the stronger he gets. You know, get another preseason or two into him. And I just think he's going to be a real problem uh, for opposition players because he's just got spark and, and X factor written all over him. And I think it was a good experience for him. Ultimately, again, very similar to Durden. Seven possessions and a goal. Did he do his job at the stage of the career that he's in? I think so. I think just, you know, I'll give him a five for his game. Go from there. Charlie he said it last week after the game he did, and he did the he did the interview post game and he, he just, you know, reiterated how, you know, grateful he is every time he, he steps out onto the field and, and gets to play a game. And I feel the same every time I watch him kick the four goals. He, he's a he's a showstopper, he's a crowd pleaser, and uh, it's just so good to see Charlie Kerno playing. You know, if only if only Harry were there together, it would just be a problem. We're just we're just far too good as a forward line when the two of them are playing. Um, but it was good to see Charlie kick four on on Darcy Moore, the All Australian centre half back. Doesn't defend one on one. Couldn't believe it when I heard it. Couldn't believe it. Um, so Charlie, I'll give him. I mean, he certainly got his job done. It kicked eight, kicked four goals. Give him. I'll give him an eight. Maybe that's harsh. I'll give him a nine. You let me know what you think. Jack Silvani. Jack Silvani played the game that he needed to play. He was a lot better this week than, than last week. He stepped up, 16 touches, eight marks. Um, he did not kick a goal, kicked it behind, a couple of hit outs. Had a crucial contested mark. I think it was later in the game. It might've been in the fourth quarter. Just willed his way. And he really played the the game in the spirit that you want it to be played. And he always does. But you know, knowing it's the Collingwood game and him being the... The, you know, the man that he is, you know, third generation player. He knows exactly what this game is all about. And he played accordingly. So I gave him a, an eight for his game. Then we go to the followers. So Tom DeConing, Chera and Hewitt. DeConing didn't feel like he impacted the game as, as well as what I would have liked to see from him. But nonetheless, when it got hot, especially in that fourth, I thought he really lifted some of his efforts were outstanding, you know, and he's coming along nicely and he's just continually building week on week. Um, he's going to have patches where it just doesn't go his way, uh, but you can't question the way he goes about it and the way that he applies himself. So uh, I gave him a seven for his game. Chera, I thought Chera was one of our better midfielders, especially early. And I was very confident that he would bounce back from from his performance last week, just in the, in the sense of the amount of ball that he was able to win and generate forward for us. He used the ball really well early. Some of his kicking, especially on the left foot, really impressive. Probably didn't have the strongest fourth quarter that we, we might have needed from him, but nonetheless, I thought he was still one of our best players on the day. 30 possessions and a goal. You can't really ask for much more than that. Um, so for that reason, I gave him a nine. Hewitt, he just keeps on keeping on 
31 possessions, seven tackles, led the team in tackles, used the ball very well at 83%. Often goes underrated, even by me. And I try and make a real point of not underrating him, but I think between he, Chera and Walsh, they were, you, you just, you can't fault their effort. I thought they were really good. Uh, I gave Hewitt a nine. He used it well. It was just tough. Just does the right thing in the right moment. He gets himself out of trouble and just so reliable. I'm, I'm really, you know, really loving every time I watch him play. On the bench, Nick Newman, Paddy Dow, Matt Owies and Jack Noons. Nick Newman, I think that might have been Nick Newman's oh, best game for the club, if not one of his best handful of games for the club. I mentioned it last week. We're going to need to rely on him a lot more since the Zach Williams injury. And he was he, he was a man possessed. He defended really well. He was really staunch. Um, and I really enjoyed his game, you know, from the lens that I saw it from. I thought uh, behind the ball, he, he did some really nice things and just played with a real, real aggression. Uh, I thought he was great. I gave him, I tossed up between an eight and a nine. It says 20 possessions next to his name, 90%. He used it well. I'm going to give Newman... I want to give him some love because I haven't really had a chance to. So I'm going to give him a nine. Paddy Dow, um, obviously came in for Matt Kennedy. Big opportunity. Did I say what I say he took? I, I, I think he played to his strengths. I think he absolutely did his job and then some on the day. I think he certainly played to his strengths. He got in the handball change, chains. He had the, the 10 contested possessions. The big thing for me with Paddy Dow's game was the five tackles. I was really pleased to see it. And if he's not getting 25 touches, that's fine. But I want to see him lay the tackle pressure. And that was probably the big question mark for me going into the game about Paddy Dow uh, and moving forward with him, you know, for him to take that next step. Because I know he can win the ball. The question marks for me come from when he has the ball, you know, is he using it well enough? And, and that's, you know, one discussion. But the other side of the game is the defensive side of the game. And some of the tackles that he he was sticking were really solid and tough. And it was it was really pleasing to see. And if that's what we're going to be seeing from Paddy Dow, four to five tackles a game, I think we're moving in the right direction with him. I'm very patient with where he's at. I trust that the coaches that are coaching him know exactly what to do with him and how to develop him and how to get the best out of him. And uh, I think it was in the second quarter where he laid a real bruising tackle on, <sighs> might have been Brody Meyer check. It might have been. It was just a really strong tackle, and he met the he met the contest with force. And I was really pleased to see it. And he seemed to really get going in there. And one thing about Paddy, if, if it's not going his way in the past, he probably hasn't asserted himself physically, defensively to get himself in the game. Whereas in this game, I thought he did that. So. I was I was I was okay with where where he was in his game. I know he's got levels to go to get better, and that's just because I, you know, we all see the potential of what he could be. So I gave him I gave him a six for his game. Maybe that's low. I'll make that a seven. You can chat about that. Always was a bit quiet until the fourth quarter. Then he kicked the two goals, so it really salvaged the day in many respects for him. Um, he lays the pressure. Later, great tackle on on Darcy Moore. I think he pinned him. He got him really good. Um, you can't question the commitment from Matt Owies. And he's sharp. He's a super professional. Kicked clutch goals. Got us back in the game. Got us going in the fourth. I know it, was, it might have been too little, too late. It really wasn't. We could have won that game. Um, so for that reason, I gave him a seven. And then Jack Noons. Jack Noons, cops, cops are, I think he just, you know, just a bad rap. People just don't appreciate what he does. Um, there was a, a, a coaches meeting with the player sponsors before the game. I didn't get to, to tune into it. It was a Zoom call, um, but I did speak to Pommy who who mentioned um, some of the things that Ash Hansen was talking about, you know, and they spoke about the Jack Noons role and how integral he is to the system and what he allows us to do is to play, you know, three to four guys and rotate them on the wing. Um, you know, and for us on this side of the fence, we just look at this. A lot of us just look at the stats and, and, and think that, oh, well, he's not impacting the game, but I'm sure structurally he does v some very important things for our wingmen and those that rotate up and down the wings, whether it be Fisher from the forward line or Doherty from the back line, um, or if Saad wants to make a run, you got Jack Noons who can fill that hole for him. Uh, and that's important. And that's hopefully something we can maybe chat about with, 
with the coaches, you know, in the future, just to give us a little bit more education on on some of these roles in the team. So for that reason, I gave Nunzi a six. And that's how I saw it. And then there's Jack Carroll, who was the sub, who had to come on. Um, I thought he started really well. And it's really hard to rate him because he's, he's, you know, he's come on. But at the end of the day, you come on as a sub, you've got to be ready. Um, I think his first 15 minutes were really solid. And then it seemed to just not, you know, go his way. Um, you know, big occasion, 80,000 people. I think he'll learn a lot from that. It's really good to get this this exposure into as many of these youngsters as possible, especially when you talk about Durden and, um, you know, Motlop and, and even, even always to an extent as well, just to get them playing in these games with these big crowds because they need to be ready for it because in the future, whether it's this year, next year, or whenever the finals type atmospheres will be there and we need them to be ready to perform under that heat because it's, it's loud and I can only imagine what it's like playing. Well, sorry, I can't imagine what it's like to be playing under such um, such an atmosphere. So Carol, did he get his job done on the day? It's so hard. He's such a youngster, you know, but I don't know. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to give him just a bare pass mark. That's probably being a little nice. He probably didn't get his job done on the day. I'll give him a four, um, but I very you know comfortable with where he's at and he'll learn from it i think you know obviously he wasn't named to play in the starting 22 and that was probably for a reason um nonetheless has to be ready when he comes on and you know that was it so like i said i haven't watched the replay so i'm you know missing a little context i'm sure but i can't bring myself to watch it that's the truth i can't bring myself to watch that game again i just refuse um let me know what you think in the comments We'll uh, get the final closure on this thing and wrap it up and, you know, sit with it during the bye and, and come back in a couple of weeks and we've got the Essendon game. So we'll chat then, have a good one and go the Mighty Blues. Yeah.